You know, when I was a kid, I heard a story about a really big rattlesnake. It was on display in Paradise Lodge on the Lower Rogue River. It was a story of an old timer that knelt down at a mountain spring like this one to fill his cup with cold water. And as he was bending over, he noticed right beside him to his shock this large snake right there hidden in the moss and the ferns. He gained his composure and with one swift move and a broken handled coffee cup, he got rid of the snake. You know the Bible in several places refers to Satan, our enemy, as a snake. And Jesus emphatically said this about him. It's recorded in John 8:44. Because there is no truth in him. Because when he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. The apostle Paul gives us this powerful insight and instruction in 2 Corinthians 10, verses 4 and 5. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Now, I think he said we have to get rid of the snake. You know, the Gospels record Satan tempting Jesus. And I believe that there's three lies that we're going to have to cast down. Matthew 4, 3. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. I think the first lie is to think that the reality of our being a child of God is somehow defined by special privilege or personal displays of power. Let's look at Jesus' response in Matthew 4.4. 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You know, when I was a kid, I heard a, another story. I heard it at the local community Bible church, one of their vacation Bible schools. I heard the story about Jesus, the Son of God, who died for me, to pay for my sin so that I could go to heaven. And we sang this song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's the Bible that tells us we're truly a child of God when we accept Christ by faith. The reality of our being a child of God is declared and defined by scripture. The second lie of the snake is to think that somehow you can manipulate or leverage God. Listen to Matthew 4, verses 5 and 6. Then the devil took him up into the holy city, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up lest you dash your foot against a stone. Do you know that the devil was quoting from Psalms 91? Psalms 91 gives us comfort in times when we're facing such things as we are even today. Listen to what Psalms 91 verses 9 and 10 says. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. 
no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. You know, this is because of our relationship that we have as a child of God that brings this protection. Not because of leverage or manipulation. Listen to Jesus' response to Satan's declaration in Matthew 4-7. Jesus said to him, It is written again, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. So if we think in some way we can manipulate or leverage God, I think we've been listening to the snake. The third lie that I want us to be aware of is found in Matthew 4, 8 and 9. Again, the devil took him up on an exceedingly high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their glory. And he said to him, all these things I will give you if you'll fall down and worship me. Do you know it's a lie to think that the things of this world will satisfy you more than your relationship with God? Listen to how Jesus responded to this, Matthew 4.10. Then Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. You know, when we really know Jesus, when we really know who he is, when we really know what he's done for us, that he died on the cross for our sins, that he forgave us, that he set us free from the chains of bondage and made us a child of the king. When we really know this, it's going to personally change us. And we, with our heart and our emotion, will worship God. Did I mention it was Jesus knowing and applying the word of God that caused him to get rid of the snake? Look at what Matthew 4.11 says. Then the devil left him. Now there's a few considerations that we should ponder. First is, if Jesus himself, the Son of God, was tempted with these lies, we aren't going to have an exemption. We will have to face these things. The good news is, we won't be facing the snake with a broken handled coffee cup. We face him with a two-edged sword. Can I challenge you in this coming week, as you face anxiety, adversity, frustration, get your Bible out. Turn to Romans 8. Read verses 11 through 18. It'll tell you that you're a child of God. And I believe it'll help you to get rid of the snake. Can I be so bold as to invite you to pray with me? Lord, help me to truly understand who you really are, what you've done for me, that I am your child. Help my confidence to be in you and your written word. And Father, forgive me for the times I've tried to leverage you and your will to try and pry my personal desires from your hand. And may your Holy Spirit help me to better understand what you've done for me so that I'll never be captured by a desire for the things of this world but that my heart will continually be drawn to you in worship. 
These things I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I don't see any snakes, so I hope to be sharing with you again next week. God bless you and keep you.